So if we're talking about water vapor, we're talking about humidity, we are also talking about clouds. You know, everybody really likes to look at cloud formations and uh, you know, pick out their favorite clouds. So we're just going to very briefly here run through this um, and give some examples of some very, a variety of different types of clouds. This example here taken from Glacier National Park. Uh, some examples we can see uh, will be tied to orographic uplift and uh, you know, another concept we'll be talking about uh, within uh, some of these lectures and lessons. But here, again, focusing on our clouds, and because we're uh, each picking up our, hopefully, our favorite type of cloud, our song to get us in the mood for this topic is Get Off of My Cloud by the Rolling Stones. So, this is really just going to be a very brief run through of some different cloud classification types. I don't want you to focus too much on uh, knowing the exact details of all the different types of clouds, um, but rather just recognize that really how we designate them or name them is really based on their structure, their appearance, and their altitude. So, kind of what do they look like? Uh, you know, what are they made of? And where are they in the, you know this altitude of our atmosphere? And so, there's three main classes that we'll be looking at: we have stratus, which is really kind of those lower clouds, or at least are, are layered uh, cumulus and then uh, cirrus clouds. And so, uh, in, in also to note that sometimes we kind of tack on the front or end of this the nimbo or nimbus name, uh, which generally just is indi an indicator of precipitation coming along with that type of cloud. So I've given you other series of links here you can also go and look at, um, and also to note that there's fog here. We're not going to really go into the different types of fog. There's several types of fog as well, um, but you know, just to help you at least get a little bit more uh, the know or where to look, start looking for information on those. Uh, we have some links here as well that you can add in your reading uh, to what we're covering here. So again, just kind of flipping through some different types of clouds. So cirrus, kind of these high-level clouds. Um, we'll be looking at, you know, again, I'm not going to read through everything here, but just to note that these clouds generally more are made of ice crystals. So we have the cirrus, the cirrus stratus, uh, which can be in the stratus name there, more for layer. Um, and then our cirrus cumulus, um, again, these being very high uh, clouds and largely made of ice crystals. These cirrus cumulus ones can have some uh, super cool water droplets in them as well, but generally the cereal, cirrus or cirrus clouds uh, are made of ice or ice crystals. But when we start getting then more into the mid-level clouds and the altitude, these alto clouds, then we start getting these made more often of water vapor or condensing water vapor into you know, water droplets. So you have these alto cumulus clouds here, alto stratus, again stratus being more that layered, that full layering of clouds here, you can see. And then also cirrus cumulus, um, or just these cumulus clouds uh, here as well. And then stratus, kind of really these are lower level, um, generally just broad cover, and blocking out most of the sun clouds. Um, we can see here, so the very common one we're used to in Eugene, especially in the winter and spring months at times. Nimbo stratus, just again indicating in this case now the stratus cloud that we have precipitation with. Um, so usually this is producing more kind of continuous uh, slow rain or snow or whatever our precipitation type is based on the temperature. It can be very widespread over area. Again, fairly familiar that we're used to uh, in the Eugene winter months. Cumulonimbus is more though what we would see in a summer type of situation. We get these big thunderstorms and we have the, uh, these are kind of individual convection cells. I'm we'll looking more at that um, in some later lect lectures and lessons. Um, so these are where you can get more of those heavy downpours, hail, things like lightning, uh, all normally associated with cumulonimbus clouds. And even some other more interesting kind of odd types of clouds that we get in certain circumstances. So lenticular clouds, often over uh, mountains we get these types of clouds. We have stable air that really has to go up and over um, the topography and you know when we get this condensation of that air into these kind of weird flying saucer arrangements as we can see in this example in Mount Hood. Um, and you see this in many uh, mountainous environments as well around. I have a time-lapse video you can also check out here on the link. Um, and even new types of clouds are being formed, or added rather, um, in, in terms of recognition. So this cloud um, recently, uh, this Asperitas cloud added to the International Cloud Atlas relatively recently. And, um, and you can look at the examples here. So again, this is just a quick run through to show you some cloud types. Kind of just a fun little lecture here. Um, you can go and look at more links to all this, but again, just remember uh, back to the beginning of the, of the lecture and the main ways we designate uh, 
and, and classify our clouds is one of the main things I just want you to focus from from this video.